This video is made in paid partnership with BetterHelp. Today, I'm not just going to talk about songs that sample other songs. I'm going to talk about songs that sample songs that sample songs. For example, Swagger Like Us by Jay-Z and T.I. is based on a sample of M.I.A.'s 2007 song, Paper Planes. But M.I.A.'s Paper Planes is itself based on a sample of The Clash's 1982 track, Straight to Hell. Another song that sampled a song that sampled a song is Lady Gaga's 2008 hit Poker Face, which samples a vocal hook from Boney M's 1977 song Mar Baker. Mar Baker by Boney M is itself based on a traditional Tunisian folk song called Sidi Mansour, specifically the 1975 version of the song by Mohamed Hennes. <laughs> the 2015 track Don't Tell Em by Jeremiah samples Snap's 1992 classic Rhythm is a Dancer. Rhythm is a dancer, I need a companion. Rhythm is a Dancer, though, is itself based on a sample from the 1984 song Auto Man by American group Nucleus. Snap have quite significantly slowed down the sample of Auto Man, which has in turn lowered the pitch of the sample. The 2007 hit song Stronger by Kanye West is based on a sample from Daft Punk's 2001 song Harder, Better, Faster, Stronger. And as mentioned in a previous video I did, Harder, Better, Faster, Stronger by Daft Punk is itself based on a sample from Cola Bottle Baby by Edwin Birdsong released in 1979. <laughs> I'm sure you'll have no trouble working out which song David Guetta used as the foundation of his 2023 track Baby Don't Hurt Me. Of course, this chorus melody is lifted from Hadaway's 93 classic What Is Love. But Hadaway's What Is Love itself features samples. The female vocal heard on What Is Love is actually taken from a vocal ad lib sample pack published by Zero G. Rihanna's 2007 song Don't Stop the Music samples a vocal hook from Michael Jackson's 1982 song Wanna Be Starting Something. Michael Jackson, though, originally lifted this vocal hook from the 1972 song, Soul Makusa. This video is made in paid partnership with something I think can help so many people. It's BetterHelp. I think there is a stigma around therapy, particularly here in the UK. I think it's seen as something that you only go and get when you're seriously mentally ill. But just like with physical health, how you don't wait till your leg has already fallen off to go to the doctors, you don't have to wait till you get seriously mentally ill to seek therapy. And although I haven't struggled particularly myself with mental illness, various people very close to me have and have sought out therapy and it has been instrumental in helping them recover and live a normal life again. 
And BetterHelp makes it easier than ever to access therapy. You can have therapy sessions with BetterHelp over phone calls, over video calls, or even just through text messaging. When you get started with BetterHelp, they will give you a questionnaire to assess your specific needs. And in most cases, they will get you paired with a therapist within 48 hours. And if you feel like the therapist that gets matched to you isn't a good fit, then you can switch at any time. 4 million people have already used BetterHelp to work on their mental health. So if you want to join them, then do use the link down below in the description to get 10% off your first month of therapy with BetterHelp. One of the most widely recognizable melodies from classical music is the opening theme from Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. In 1976, Walter Murphy spun Beethoven's iconic tune into a successful disco track called A Fifth of Beethoven. And then in 2012, this disco reworking of Beethoven was then once again reworked, this time by Robin Fick for his debut single, When I Get You Alone. Last year, the track Bittersweet Goodbye by Izzy Cross got to number 19 in the UK singles charts. And I'm sure it won't take you very long at all to recognise what song has been sampled here. Those moments spent with you till the sky is turning blue. Bittersweet goodbye tonight. Can we keep this higher? Of course, Bittersweet Goodbye is not only sampling Bittersweet Symphony by The Verve, but it's repurposing the melody from that song to form its own new vocal melody. But as many of you will already be aware, The Verve's Bittersweet Symphony is itself based on a sample. Bittersweet Symphony is based on a sample from the Rolling Stones song, The Last Time. However, if you compare the two songs, you'll find very little in common. And that is because The Verve didn't sample the original Rolling Stones recording of the song, but instead sampled an orchestral version recorded by the Andrew Oldman Orchestra, Andrew Oldman actually being the producer of the Rolling Stones. The strings melody we hear in the Andrew Oldman version of the song was arranged by David Whittaker, and it's seemingly a modified version of the guitar riff from the original Stones version of The Last Time. But this strings melody is far enough removed from that original guitar lick that I think if this orchestral version of the song, if the Andrew Oldman version of The Last Time was not presented as a cover of the Rolling Stones song, I don't think anybody would ever spot the link. And this is what makes the infamous legal dispute surrounding this song so ridiculous. As is typical protocol when you sample an existing song, The Verve did attempt to clear the sample of Bittersweet Symphony but fatally, they didn't get all of the permissions they needed, namely the permission of ex-Rolling Stones manager, Alan Klein, who actually held the copyright of the song the last time. During his career, Alan Klein infamously made a business of exploiting and squeezing money out of song copyrights, and Bittersweet Symphony would be no different. He sued the Verve and strong-armed them into sacrificing not only 100% of the song's earnings, but the full writer's credits. So the official writers of Bittersweet Symphony the Verb's biggest hit would be Jagger and Richards of the Rolling Stones. And this is extra absurd when you remember that the music that the Verb sampled wasn't even written by Jagger and Richards. It just happened to be part of an arrangement of a Rolling Stones song. Thankfully, though, the story does have a happy ending. In 2019, Jagger and Richards finally agreed to return the Bittersweet Symphony royalties and songwriter credits to Richard Ashcroft of the Verve. And our last example today is the song Praising You, by Rita Ora, which even from the title alone, I think you can guess which song has been reworked here. If you've watched my previous sample videos, you know that Fatboy Slim's Praise You is based on various different samples. So what we have here is a reworking of a song that itself is a massive collage of many different songs. To find out more about how Fatboy Slim wove together Praise You from various different samples, then check out this previous video of mine.